Hello again folks, in tonight's short video I'm going to show you a product that I recently purchased from a private seller on eBay and at the end of the video I'm going to tell you about a small project I've got going on in the background. I say a small project, it's a rather huge project. Uh, I thought I'd tell you about it and see if there was any appetite to see said project on the channel. So, um, we'll get to that at the end like I say and we'll start off with this. Um, what is it? It's a torque screwdriver. Um, this one's made by Sumaki, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, and I've been in the market for a torque screwdriver for quite some time now. I do quite a lot of laptop repairs and stuff like that. And it's rather mandrolic using, you know, something like this to take out individual screws and replace them, you know, as you're doing the repair. Um, and, you know, a torque screwdriver is just going to make my life so much easier. So let us say, I've been in the market one for one for a while, um, about 18 months ago, a little short story here, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief, um, about 18 months ago I purchased a very similar model to this, Samaki again, um, and I got it for significantly less than it should have been, and as I've come to, uh, you know, my past experiences in these situations where you, you get something super cheap, uh, quite often Funnily enough, they go missing on the post and then they get relisted a couple of months later. So uh, that's indeed what happened with that one I purchased. It, it went missing in the post. Um, so I set up an alert on my phone, you know, on the eBay app to, to tell me if it had been relisted. And uh, yeah, that was 18 months ago and it, it never came back up. However, this one came up a couple of weeks ago, um, listed for £60 or best offer, buy it now plus postage. Um, and that alert came through at the very second I was walking into a meeting at work. Uh, that meeting lasted two and a half hours and um, I fully expected it to be sold by the time I get, got out of that meeting. Um, got back to the office, got a brew on the go and um, checked my phone. And in that two and a half hour period, the seller had dropped the price to £40 or best offer, but, uh, you know, best offer type thing. And... Um, I thought that this guy really doesn't know what he's got here. So I put in an offer and the long and short of it is I got it for £35 of clean delivery. Um, I'll come back to the retail price of it uh, towards the end of this segment um, just to show you how much of a bargain I did actually get. So, yeah, what is a top screwdriver if you don't know? Well, clearly it's a screwdriver of some description. And um, it basically tightens screws to a specific torque setting in the case of this one between 3 and 19 uh, kilograms um, per square centimeter so that means if we use the um the cutting mat here for each uh, one of these squares on the lowest torque setting it will apply three kilograms of force um you know to each uh, square centimeter if that makes sense um so when we're talking about uh, laptop screws and stuff like that you know two and a half three millimeter screws um so if it's three kilograms per square per square um clearly each millimeter square millimeter is is going to be about 300 grams so you're looking about 900 grams of clamping force uh, on, your, on a typical laptop screw which is absolutely perfect um what it means is um it will automatically tighten it and cut off. So when it gets to that tight, you know, that tightness, if you want to call it that, that torque, it will automatically shut off. And that reduces the risk of you stripping out screws, stripping out brass inserts, and, you know, if it's a self-tapping screw, you know, actually stripping the the receiving, uh, sort of, how do I want that, without it uh, being innuendo bingo, you know, it, it won't strip out the threads on the, on the plastic is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, this one can be uh, set between 3 and 19 uh, kilograms, like I say. Um, so we'll, we'll have a look around it and I'll just show you how, you know, how quick I can actually make a job. Um, so on the, the power front, we've got this uh, laptop style, if you want to call it that, power brick. Uh, you know, mains cable comes in here on a... Um, it is the C5, I think that's called, or Mickey Mouse. For obvious reasons, uh, type connector. Uh, it goes into the box. We've got a power switch on the side and we've got a high low speed setting. Uh, low setting is 650 RPM, uh, high is a thousand. And then we've got a screw on uh, cable here, six pin 
connector and that goes up to the, the back of the screwdriver, screws in here. Nice bit of strain relief here. Uh, we've also got this lanyard here. And what this is for is what we call a tool balancer, <coughs> excuse me, which is essentially um, a piece of cord or a piece of uh, steel wire uh, with a spring connected to the back of a spool and what you can do is you can hook it up to the tool balancer the tool balancer is up in the, the ceiling of your workshop you adjust it so that it, it basically balances the weight of the tool itself as the name may suggest and allows you to pull it down into your uh, work area use it and then when you finish with it you just literally lift it up move your hand away and it stays there so more for is it an industrial assembly line that type of thing um yeah, not much more to say about that. On the side here, we've got F for forward, O for off, and R for reverse. Quite self-explanatory. We've got a paddle switch here, um, and clearly you're going to be using it in this orientation. Well, you can use it in any orientation, but that's this uh, general orientation that you'd be using it in uh, day to day. On here, uh, we've got a standard, we've got the collet here, pullback collet. Uh, it takes a 6.3 millimeter bits. And on here we've got a torque setting, as you can see. So that is it at zero. So that's the uh, three kilogram setting all the way up to eight, which is a 19 kilogram setting. 16 uh, sort of divisions or indents as you go around. So once you've done 13 clicks, I don't think you'll be here that. Maybe if I do that. Um, yeah, 16 clicks uh, will get you to the next uh, whole number, so 16 clicks uh, anti-clockwise in this uh, orientation will take you to number one. So we'll put it back down to, to zero because that's uh, generally the set of setting I'll be using it on. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll let you hear the, uh, the speed. So this is high and this is low. Let's see, 1,650 RPM respectively. So, um, yeah, pretty good little bit of kit. Um, it's, uh, from my use of it so far, I've been pretty impressed with it. So what I'll do now is I'll give you a quick demonstration. I've not run a clock or anything, but I'll just give you a demonstration of how long it takes. So this is this little uh, Commodore Amiga uh, joystick test that I made in a, a few videos ago. So I'm just going to take the, the screws out. And I'm, you can see I'm doing this quickly. You know, I'm not hanging about here, but I'm just wanting to give you a real-time demonstration of how how long it takes to take the screws out um, and then replace them using a you know a, a standard manual screwdriver. So there's our four screws out. There's my shoddy wiring. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll pop the screws back in. Again, I'm intentionally not trying to hang about just to make this as, as quickly, you know, do this as quick as I reasonably can. And there we go. So if you've been timing that, I don't know how long that took, probably about a minute, something like that, maybe just over a minute. Let's do it. Um, let's do it using the, the screwdriver. I'll put it on the high speed setting and uh, we'll see how we go. Ready? Get your stopwatches ready. Three, two, one. There we go. Out. Put it into forward. Job done. How quick was that? A fantastic bit of kit. Um, and hopefully you heard that. I'll just back these off slightly. When it finishes tightening it, you hear an audible click, and that is it basically shutting off the power. There you go. You hear that click there? Yeah, let's see, job done. A really good bit of kit. 
Um, now, as you know, on my channel, I like to do all my that's a hobby, you know, every part of my hobby on a budget. I've always said buy the best you can afford. Uh, clearly, um, that's a, a no-brainer. Um, however, clearly, not everybody's going to get rush out and buy one of these. Um, these are super expensive. Um, I paid, I think I mentioned before, £35 including delivery. The current special offer price on this specific model is €549 Euros plus VAT. The normal selling price is €725 Euros plus VAT. So the best part of €1,000, which is that about twelve or $1,300, something like that. It is an insanely expensive piece of equipment that clearly you're not just going to rush out and buy as a hobbyist unless you've got plenty of money at your disposal um, and you don't mind you know shelling out that kind of cash um, but it just proves a point that if you set up alerts on ebay you browse you know the business what is it business and office and industrial uh, category on ebay filter by end ending soon as filter by auction that kind of thing you can pick up bargains and i think i definitely struck gold uh, with this item i'm sure you'll agree so that was it you know good little bit of kit um what you, you know pop down below what you think about it or you know do you think even at 35 pounds it was uh good value or do you think it's still too expensive i don't know pop down your comments below Right, okay, the project I've got going on. Um, you will probably uh, note and be in you know, no doubt of the fact that I have got a particular interest in a, a specific aircraft uh, that used to be operated by the Royal Air Force. Um, that aircraft, let me just bring it in, is this, the Avro Vulcan, uh, you know, 1950s, uh, British long range strategic nuclear bomber, and um, you know, I, you know, I don't know why I just got a, a really massive interest in it. You know, it's a beautiful looking aircraft, as far as I'm concerned, and um, it's a uh, you know, a big, powerful aircraft. And you know, sadly, it no longer flies, as you'll probably be aware. Um, but I have found myself in a position that I uh, will be involved in the restoration of one. X-Ray Lima 319 based at the uh, North East Land, Sea and Air Museum. I'll try to get this in here so it doesn't reflect off the, the lighting. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'm involved with that project. A uh, number of my colleagues at work are as well. And we're working alongside the volunteers at Nell Sam, as the, the museum's known. Um, and what we're planning to do is um, basically restore the aircraft. It's been there for 35 years. Uh, the Nissan plant, or you know, just next to the Nissan plant in uh, Sunderland, um, it's been sitting there for 35 years in the rain, the paint's faded, a bit of corrosion, um, all that good stuff. And it really needs a good looking after. Uh, and that's what we're planning to do. So we're going to be fully repainting the aircraft and um, hopefully restoring some limited um, power to the aircraft in terms of electrical power, uh, Sadly, uh, as much as I would, as much as I would like to say we could do, um, I don't think we'll ever get the engines running. But um, there is one sort of small thing we could get running, and that is the auxiliary, uh, sorry, air, auxiliary airborne power plant, which is essentially a jet engine connected to a generator, uh, which provides uh, power to the aircraft when uh, there's no ground power available. Um, so yeah. That has been removed from the aircraft. Um, it was removed in a working condition and we're looking at overhauling that, replacing the fluids and reinstalling it to hopefully, let us say, restore some sort of limited electrical power to the aircraft. Hopefully enough to, to uh, possibly cycle the bomb bay doors and the, the control surfaces, air brakes and such like. So, yeah, I just want to gauge your interest. Is that something you'd like to see? Would you like to see little vlogs of the process of that restoration? Um, clearly, the, a lot of the work is going to be, um, you know, sanding paintwork and priming paintwork and repainting paintwork and replacing corroded panels and such like. But there will be some sort of, um, you know, electrical or electronic type stuff. Um, 
you know, as well as, you know, as part of that project. Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I am still intending doing, you know, and I will still do electronics videos. That's what my channel is all about. Um, I previously put up some gliding videos and I don't think people were very receptive to them and suggested I create a second channel for it. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, would you mind seeing, you know, that type of video on here? I suppose much in the same way as Ave does, you know, he'll do... He does totally random stuff all over the place, doesn't he? He does electronic stuff. He'll do mechanical stuff, tear downs, and all that kind of stuff. So not in a, a dissimilar way to that. Um, I just like your your thoughts. Um, clearly, if I do decide to do it, and it's not something you're interested, in, by all means, of course, you can skip those videos. Or if you really don't like them, you know, unsubscribe. Please don't unsubscribe. But you know, there is that option. So if you just give me a, a bit of feedback, see what you think. Um, I'd greatly appreciate it. So that's about it. Um, thanks very much for watching. Apologies, I've not put a video up for a couple of weeks. Um, normally get five people in our office at work, and we've been running uh, with two for the past couple of weeks. So it's been all hands to the pumps, um, and that's why I've not got a video up recently. I know it's the the same old excuse, Chris, but um, yeah, unfortunately that's what it's been like recently. Um, but yeah. Once again, rambling on. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. And as always, all the best. Oh, and if you haven't already done so, you'd like to do so, click on my fat head here. Take care.